in DayZ, cars can be confusing, but they're actually quite simple when you know a few key things. And here, I'll not only explain how to build them, but everything you'll ever need to know about them. If you liked the video, please leave a like or a subscribe, it genuinely helps me out so much. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Oh, no. Wow, that hedgehog was huge. Firstly, what cars are there and how can you find one? In Vanilla DayZ, there are four cars, a truck and a multi-purpose vehicle, each offering different benefits and drawbacks. But for now, they are the Ada 4x4, the Olga 24, the Gunther 2, the Sarka 120, the M3S truck and the M1025, which is a Humvee. Not every vehicle you see can be fixed up, but there are versions you can fix up that can be found scattered throughout the map. You can use I Survive to help you locate their spawns. If you find a car you want and you're not 100% sure if you can do it up, approach it and press the inventory button. If this shows up with slots, you're good to go. You can also see the condition of it, which is shown by this little green dot. But when you find one, the next step is to fix it. Focusing on just cars for a second, each car usually requires several items, a radiator, a spark plug, a battery, four wheels, and some petrol. This is the absolute bare minimum a car usually needs to move, and most cars will already have several of them randomly attached when you find them. So let's look at these parts because there are some things you absolutely need to know about them. Starting with the radiator. When you first find the radiator, you will then need to add water to it for it to run safely. You can tell a car has little to no water in it because the engine will start smoking when you turn it on. Failing to add water will cause the engine to eventually become damaged until it becomes ruined. It will require around 5 or 6 bottles of water to fill it up, but adding even one bottle of water can slow the rate at which the engine becomes ruined by quite a bit. This should allow you to get it safely to your base. And something important to note is if you fit the radiator, fill it with water and then remove it, even for a split second, the water will disappear completely. So you'll need to fill it up again by finding the radiator cap and then interacting with it with some kind of water container. Without water, you can usually only get around 2 minutes drive time, sometimes a little longer. This is a common reason you find cars abandoned and ruined in weird places. People driving it just didn't put water in. However, if you don't have water, don't fear. There is still a way you can make it to a water pump if you're careful. The way to do this is simple. As I said, the car will start and drive normally without water in the radiator, giving you a couple of minutes of drive time. But as you drive, keep watching out for the engine light. This appears in the bottom left. When the light appears yellow, engine is taking damage because it's overheating. When the engine light appears orange, you need to get out and fix the engine right away because it's about to become ruined any second. To fix the engine, you will require a blowtorch. This used to be a pipe wrench, it's now a blowtorch, and this will fix it back to a good condition. Look at the engine and hit the fix. You can then do the same until the orange light appears again. This can usually be done a few times, helping to get it to a base or storage. But if that light turns red, or if you approach a car and the little circle next to it is red, it's ruined beyond repair and you can't even enter it. You will, however, be able to remove things from its trunk and despite the engine being ruined at no point does the radiator become ruined by this method it's the engine that suffers the damage meaning if the car becomes ruined because it overheats you could still use the part for another vehicle with a working engine the car battery however is more simple this just requires a battery charge the amount of charge is indicated in the bar below the battery icon however you can find the battery charger on a lot of servers and attach it to the battery to get it charged to your required level if the battery doesn't have any charge in it. The spark plug and the petrol require no specific additional information and the petrol can be kept in any container, though a jerry can is always preferred because it carries the most. The amount of petrol you have in the car is displayed in the bottom left above the temperature gauge. To fill it up, 
Approach the gap which can be located in different places depending on the car. Put the container with the fuel in hand and click on the interact button. The wheels however are specific to each car. So the Gunther will need a Gunther wheel, the Olga will require an Olga wheel and so on and so forth. Now there are some additional things you can add to make your cars more complete but they are not required to make the car specifically drive. Doors, trunks and hoods can add some protection though bullets will still pay penetrate them and there's no way you can fire back regardless of whether you have a door or not even as a passenger you can't even access your inventory but to remove the outside parts from your car or from other cars they usually have to be in the open position before the option appears light bulbs will allow you to travel by night easily albeit at the expense of stealth but when the engine is switched off running lights can drain the battery more quickly so keep that in mind they can also be seen from a long way away so be careful plus the car isn't silent either so be weary of nearby zombies in the local area or pursuing ones that have followed the sound as you pull up you don't want to be getting ambushed as you pull over if you do panic and get stuck every vehicle can be pushed by walking in front or behind it and interacting with it this will give it a little nudge and get you out of your position unlike the cars however the trucks only require a battery but a lot more wheels to work but note that the battery it requires is a truck battery, so a car battery is of no use here. You can also add storage to them by adding wooden boxes and barrels into the back. This increases the overall storage a lot and almost makes up for its slow and heavy handling. Although as of recent updates, it definitely handles a lot better on hills, so don't rule it out. This is great for moving bases or doing huge trades with other factions. The Humvee also requires fewer parts than the car. It needs Humvee wheels, a car battery and a glow plug. It seats four people including the driver and provides a level of bullet resistance, not bullet proofing bullet resistance. Humvees, the Ada and trucks are all better off-road than the other three. So if you have an inner land base, it might be worth considering these as options. If you crash, you'll likely damage or ruin your engine parts. So keeping space is always advised, as well as keeping spares. But a few things can be fixed on the go. As discussed, a damaged engine as well as the bumper requires a blowtorch to fix it. Just open the hood and press the interact button before the engine is ruined. Any doors can be repaired by using epoxy putty, but not if they're in a ruined state and it will never mend glass. If the glass is broken, there is currently no way in the game to fix or replace it. And lastly, tires can be fixed using a tire repair kit. So you have your car. But how do you drive it properly without ruining it? Well, some cars in DayZ are manual, aka stick driven, meaning you will have to manually shift them as you drive. To do this, use Q and E on the keyboard or B and A on the Xbox and subsequently circle and X on the PlayStation. Keep in mind you also have to downshift, so if you slow down, knocking it down a gear or two will keep that speed consistent. This also helps with hills, with the lower the gear, the more torque pushing the car over the hill. If you shift too late, you'll usually hear this screeching noise. This means you should shift gear because over revving is not good for the car and will damage the engine. Also, just as an additional piece of information, if you exit the car while it's in neutral, the car will keep running. But if it's in gear, you'll automatically switch it off. This is essentially stalling the car. If you are in the middle of fixing one up, you don't want people taking pieces off it if they find it every time you park up. Luckily, you can lock pieces into place. This means that unless a player has the required tool, they won't be able to just strip your cars for parts, which is very useful considering vanilla Daisy cars do not have keys. To lock doors, hoods, and trunks into place, use a wrench. For engine parts such as the radiator and battery, you can use a screwdriver. And for wheels, you can use a tire iron. When they're locked into place, you'll get this little white tool icon on them. But all of this can be a bit fidgety and it's not always easy to find them to lock onto. Just take your time and it will usually work. If you need to fill up jerry cans or water bottles or pots with petrol, find any petrol station and approach the pumps with a container to collect the fuel. To find doors, trunks and hoods, once you have a car working, you can just keep driving around and stop when it's safe nearby any similar car to check if it has something you can use. Also good to note, the Ada is a two-door vehicle with four seats, meaning you have to slide 
slide the front seat down to enter the rear of the car, so you won't need to find four doors for this particular model. It's also a decent go-to for off-roading, with it being much smaller than the Humvee, making storage quite a bit easier. However, if you are in a gunfight, it will take longer for your rear passengers to be able to leave the car. But for some more advanced information on this particular subject, then I recommend clicking on this video right here. Or for something else, click here. And as always, until next time.